okay well while we're waiting for him we'll do the any uh errors or omissions in the minutes from september 30th if not somebody want to move blaine moves all in favor carried Cannon, you're online Good morning, morning, Mr. Coles. How are you today? Not too bad. It's Monday. It's Monday. That's good. So, so I guess uh, we'll give you the floor right off the get-go if you want, and then you can get, continue on with your day. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for taking the time. We're we're embarking on a really exciting initiative, one that I haven't seen the likes of in my entire career. So. We'll, um, that's the good news, is it's sort of breathing new life into Farming Smarter and to all of us on staff here because, you know, the last little bit's been a little bit tough with the transition from, you know, the laws of Alberta agriculture, the creation of r and r get tired of chasing money, and, you know, spinning your tires. So, so this is an exciting initiative led by the federal government, Agriculture Climate Solutions Program. And they're establishing what they're calling Living Labs. And the concept is, is very simple. It's actually focusing on farmers, which is, I don't know why it's a novel idea, but it seems pretty obvious to me. I think we've actually been operating as a, a living lab our, our entire uh, history. But uh, I guess what's nice is that the, the government has recognized that this type of approach is, is one that works. So farmer, farmer needs first, they obviously are trying to meet um, the climate goals that they put in place from uh, Paris Climate Accord, and uh, the nice thing is, though, is that they're, they're creating these labs across all of Canada. They've established a number of them in eastern Canada, and right now there's a number that are applying for in, in Saskatchewan, uh, Alberta, and British Columbia. So we were successful in our first phase of the application. So again, like I said, first time in a career, we're getting paid to write the proposal which has never happened before. So we received a $100,000 grant to put this proposal together to establish a living lab in Southern Alberta. So that's what we're doing is, is we're sort of focusing in on our area of expertise. A little bit on the forest side of things and marginal lands in particular. But uh, the budget is about $8 million over five years. And so that what that turns into is about a million per year. Projects, research, you name it. And then we also get to direct $600,000 to Bank Canada Science. So we're working with a select few number of scientists, and mostly at the, uh, the Leopard Research Center here, but uh, you know, folks with expertise in meat management, soil health, uh, pulse crop pathology, agronomy, shelter books, and expertise that we leverage. So we're currently working with all of them and, and sort of putting proposals together for efforts over the next five years. What's really unique about this program, though, is it's focused on sort of this, these principles of co-design, co-develop, and evaluate. So uh, we actually have some flexibility in our approach. And so what we want to do is recognize the unique that are out there. So in Southern Alberta, there's lots of different types of farms. There's there's the irrigated uh, potato type farm, uh, there's dry land farming, and there's, there's rancher levels of zero tillage and so on. And then there's also different cultures. So you've got the Hutterites and you know, different, um, different religious uh, groups and so on, and different approaches that all sort of place. Uh, on the flip side, they really are encouraging a collaborative approach. So looking at all different types of expertise, but also different perspectives. So, you know, one farmer might, you know, be really focused on equipment, and another farmer might hire a drum, and so on. So, so it, you know, we're trying to take an angle where, where we look at every every different part, parcel of agriculture. We, we sort of started off um, working with, you know, our board and invited folks to build a strategic plan, and then we went out to various locations and did some some sort of tweaking of the plan. And what we've come up with that will be our focus will be three main objectives. The first is to maximize crop cover and, and then thus soil carbon sequestration.
demonstration. So the more we can get the ground covered throughout the growing season, the better. Perennial forages are actually one of the best approaches along that front. But a lot of grain farmers are just uh, adopting the forages. So, so that that would be the lens. You know, it has to it has to make sense to farm. Uh, maximizing crop cover. You know, we'll be looking at cover cropping, uh, winter cropping. Grain and forage production. We're going to look at incorporation of perennial crops, high biomass crops such as hemp and alfalfa, and, and, and even you know, switchgrass and things like that. We want to improve the management of marginal lands, so we'll be addressing some salinity issues. Uh, that's where some of the expertise is actually a project where we're going to be looking at willows for salinity management. So within all of these things that I'm talking about, they all have a subset of, of different approaches. Um, the second main objective is simply to reduce soil erosion. And while I think all the dry land farmers have done a great job with the adoption of their tillage, our irrigation folks have been a little bit slower to adopt. And I think you've all noticed over the last few years, there's been some pretty major erosion events. And this is a great opportunity to actually have some serious resources put towards um, stopping that from happening. It's, it's rather catastrophic. Um, it's kind of sad to see happen and I know a lot of the counties actually have expenses, you know, cleaning dishes that are can, canals are getting filled in the soil. So um, we definitely want to look at some management practices that will help reduce that. So things like reduce tillage under irrigation, incorporation of strict tillage, uh, cover cropping under irrigation is probably going to be the main priority for some of those uh, high erosion events and, and root crop type Incidences. We want to sort of look at, you know, how do we get into ultra low disturbance seeding? Because even the dry land folks are having uh, erosion events going on with the crazy events that we've been going on. Uh, the saloons that have dried out are now blowing. And so there's, there's all these, we've done a good job, but I think the weather has actually changed in stronger winds. We're having less snowfall in the winter. We need to sort of adapt some of those practices as well. Um, so soil conservation with the high disturbance, irrigation, irrigated crops as like potatoes, sugar beets, dry beans, low residue crops, even corn land is growing. So um, we're going to look at things like uh, living mulches in corn and relay cropping, double cropping, that sort of stuff. And then uh, a small amount we'll be looking at sort of enhancing the biodiversity and the natural habitat piece. So, you know, shelter belts have, have you know, they're nothing new, but um, they're still being taken out in, in large quantities. I, I've seen you know, natural habitat just being removed just because of logistics. And so we're going to have some projects looking at evaluating the benefit of them. And there's a bit of a resurgence going on at the same time as, as removal, but um, you know, part of that is understanding the tree and what benefits are. The third objective is looking at enhanced energy efficiency. And really what that is is a grind. So whenever we can produce more with less inputs, then that's going to be of benefit on the whole carbon cycle piece. So one of the major ways we can achieve that is you know, incorporation of more leguminous crops, pulse crops, perennial alfalfas, and things like that. Uh, we're going to be looking at some nitrogen studies, looking at enhanced fertilizer management strategies. Some of, the, some of those products actually are helping on the greenhouse gas side of things. Uh, but honestly, the, the best approach for that is fall crops. So we're probably going to be looking a little bit more at developing uh, other fall crops that haven't really taken off. Even winter wheat adoption has been pretty slow. Uh, sometimes it's management, sometimes it's uh, logistics, but tackling that. There'll be some integrated pest management strategies, uh, things like a little bit of work on intercropping. Uh, you know, we already have some projects going on patch management control for glyphosate tolerant kochia and, and so on. So, you know, despite the fact that we would like to sequester garbage, sometimes some of the efforts is simply protecting the practices that we do have. So once you start losing Roundup as a tool, then all of a sudden cultivation comes back in. Uh, irrigation strategies, we'll probably do some efforts along the, the variable rate irrigation. And uh, interestingly enough, the whole buzz that you hear in media around smart this smart that, that isn't all that solutions for the application of technology and you know we'll do a little bit of that but we'll sort of 
pick and choose where to put our efforts. So that's the Coles Notes version of our living lab. We've got 30 partners on so far. Uh, it's, it's been a, a challenging effort because of the election. So you know we weren't allowed to discuss anything during the caretaker convention, but now we're rushing to put this massive proposal for almost the next 10 years. That's actually due on January 15th. So we're making headway. We've got a great team. Okay, any questions for Ken? Question would be, what are you asking for out of the county then, Ken? Um, any other questions? Ken, Josh, back here. Um, what are you, in the different areas, whether it's determine what living lab would be best in that area, are you going to take producer's input on that? Are you going to take, because um, what, you know, we've talked about this before, and we want to do the best for the rate payers if we are going to support yeah. something. So how does that look? Yeah. And how are you going to manage all these different labs? So, yeah, that is a good question. It is, it is kind of an orchestration here. So one, one of the principles that we're going to do is to create almost like an expert community working group in areas of interest to various farmers. So, for example, cover crop under irrigation is going to be a lot of work because cover crops are very challenging to find out these days. But, um, so then we'll have a scientist, we'll have, you know, an agronomist, a couple of farmers, and then it will almost be like mini think tanks that will go out and evaluate the efforts that we're doing. If we're on the right track, then we'll continue those efforts. If we need to tweak and adapt, then we have that flexibility. So that, that will be a, a continual yearly uh, approach on the different systems. So if you're looking at your rate payers and your sort of areas of interest or concern, then it would be either tying into one of those working groups or it would be to have one of those mini hubs uh, in place. And then what that what that ends up meaning is that maybe it's a group of farmers, maybe it's one farmer, it doesn't matter to us. Then we're going to be uh, committing to developing that relationship and understanding what the needs and what the opportunities are. 
you want to make the extension based. Uh, sometimes it's not mine, and sometimes it's we need to talk to the banks or to AFSC to help manage the risk side of it. So there will be sort of that holistic approach. Um, it is, we are going to have to increase our capacity to be able to manage these relationships. And that's why, um, quite honestly, we just want to work with people that want to work with us and that are also committed to it. So, you know, if you guys are committed to that, you will have to commit to that relationship as well. And, and there will be some in kind contributions uh, if that makes sense. Okay. Any other questions? Not seeing anything, Ken. Uh, I, I got a few people in mind that would probably work good for your project, so maybe shoot me an email with the info and I can uh, forward it off to them, then they can get in contact with you. Okay. I can't see who's talking. It's Dustin, sorry. Oh, hey, Dustin. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, thank you very much, Ken. You have a great day. Okay, uh, we'll move on to reports, so Ag Fieldman report. Okay, so turn this on, there we go. Um, so the South Region ASB virtual conference was hosted by Cardston County. Um, there was also a few of you that attended in person, um, and then the rest of us by virtual communications. That was October the 6th. Um, we have seven traps that we deal with with the Dutch Elm Disease Society. Um, so they were taken down on October 7th, and then they get sent to Olds College for sampling. Um, they look for European and native elm bark beetles that carry the pathogen that causes Dutch Elm Disease. Um, sea plant inspections, there's been two inspections on mobile seed cleaning plants this fall and they've both passed inspection um, and then last week the 1122 co-op plant was inspected as well and, and passed of course. Um, meetings and training, um, so staff participated in the Canadian Agricultural Safety Association virtual conference that was October 20th and 21st. Um, and the Ag Supervisor participated in the Milk River Watershed Council Canada produ Producers Leading the Way Project meeting on October the 13th. Um, the goal of that meeting was to gather information and input from stakeholders working in conservation and species at risk to develop an online survey for distribution to cow-calf producers in the Milk River watershed. Um, that survey is now live and can be found at, at this link here. Um, there's also a letter that has been sent out along with a, a paper copy of the survey to producers in, in that watershed in Cypress County too. Um, the Ag Supervisor joined the Central Rabies Control Committee meeting on October 20th. Um, it was discussed that this program may be suspended for three years. Um, so there will be more of that coming up here in the agenda as well. Um, I also attended eight virtual training sessions for environmental farm plans this fall um, and attended the Advancing Women, Women in Agriculture Conference. That was November 22nd and 23rd. That was virtual. Um, Alberta Agriculture has hosted a couple town hall virtual meetings to provide updates with the ASB program and other relevant programs and information. So there's been a few of those. Um, Clean Farms had uh, their unwanted pesticide and livestock medication roundup on October 26th. There's usually a report on the number of you know, uh, containers or, or liters collected, that sort of thing, but I haven't heard that yet. The annual rat inspections were started at the beginning of November and finished at the end of the month there. Um, all occupied and unoccupied sites that are potential rat habitats in range one are uh, inspected twice a year. Um, there were no signs of rats there. And we hosted a working well workshop on November 4th. It was well attended. There was 28 participants, so that was 
great and we had really good positive feedback about that from lots of people and and others interested maybe in a septic sense workshop to kind of follow that up so I've been in contact with with somebody for that program too so maybe we'll look at that in January or February or something um, in-service training is held December 6th to the 9th at the Weston in Edmonton. Um, our ag staff is not attending this year just due to the uncertainty of COVID-19. The organizing committee for the Northwest region has decided not to offer a virtual session this year. The ASB Provincial Conference is scheduled for January 25th to the 27th. More details will be provided at a later date for that one. They had polled municipalities earlier um, just to see if people would be interested in going, like the whole group or just the fieldmen and the chairman or virtually or so I'm not sure what they've decided on that yet. Um, and soil conservation articles. So the counties of Newell, Forty Mile and Lethbridge and the MD of Tabor had their idea to partner with Farming Smarter to write articles on soil erosion and they have been published and are available to the public now. Uh, there was a total of nine other, well, nine municipalities including Cypress County who contributed to that educational plan. Um, the articles can be found on the Cypress County website and we're going to be posting one a week on social media. And they had also sent uh, several of these little booklets with those articles in it as well for us. So, And I guess that's my report. Questions? Okay, thanks. Any questions for Lisa? Uh, Lisa, kind of old business, but did you have a chance to talk to Clean Farm about the best side container recycling site at Hilda? Yeah, so they just recommended that we hold off because they kind of indicated that there's going to be news in the new year. So okay. I don't know what that's going to be, if, if it's going to be somebody else taking over responsibility for those sites or what. So we're supposed to just hold off on thinking about new ones or okay. anything like that. The other thing, that Working Well workshop, was that recorded that people can watch it still? or What's that recorded? I can't remember. Yeah, I'm sure it probably was, but... Okay. I can ask her and, and see if she can send us a copy if there's one. Do you can want put, it? Yeah, I wouldn't mind it, but can we put a link on the website, like on the county website to it? If, is it public? or? Oh, uh, I don't know about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, if you could send it to me, that'd be good. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Shane. When will we know the results from the Dutch Elm disease traps? I'm not sure. I don't know when they do that, if they kind of save them, you know, for winter projects or whatever. I can look into that as well and see if if they have any information that they can share with us yet. Any other questions for Lisa? No. Uh, Shane, is there a seed plant report? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to move the reports. Connie, thanks. All in favor? Carried. Okay, 7.1, Army Smarter. We should have had Ken put a little blurb in about this. <laughs> yeah. This I, I kind of thought they were probably involved a little bit with together. So. Well, I suppose they maybe could be, but this is their um, uh, agron Agronomy Smarts membership, so they asked about this about six months ago as well. Um, with a one-year membership, like we could pay a thousand dollars, and then we would, um, you know, get all these services or discounts or, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, the do I have that in here? Yeah, I'm not sure what month, what meeting it was before, but we had just um, decided to accept it for information. So I don't know if your minds are changed on that or not. There's there's access to some of their events and, and that sort of thing and online information, of course, and, and they've got smart partners. So it's usually 
outfits out of Lethbridge kind of Tabor area that you can get discounts if you're, you know, a membership subscriber. So um, they're just following up again uh, six months later and just wondered if we're interested in purchasing a membership or not. Is there any value out of this to you guys as the egg team? Maybe like for some of their conferences or, you know, like the workshops or field tours and stuff like that, like we would have um, access to those then rather than just paying, you know, if we chose to attend something like that. So I guess, I guess the question I'm asking is, is, it a val is there enough value in it for us to approve it for you guys? Because I, I don't see a whole bunch of value out of it for us, but it'd be more for you guys. Yeah, and I mean, for a $1,000, it, it's more of, you know, a contribution to them, I guess, more than what we might get out of it. If we wanted to go, we could just pay our, you know, whatever fee they were asking for each event type thing and go that way, so. Okay. Kennedy, can you bring Connie back up on the screen? Co oh, yeah. Yeah, good point for sure. That was part of our, you know, reasoning for not going to IST too. We didn't, we all didn't need our credits this year, so we thought we could pass this year. But yeah, I mean, that's important as well for sure. So I guess that's a question. Then does anybody need their credits? That doesn't happen. Do. Yeah, I Connie do. does. <laughs> Are we gonna spend thousand dollars for Connie well, after she didn't bring cookies? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean a thousand dollars it just yeah. helps them out and stuff too right it's not a huge amount but I, I, I don't know we we do partner with Farming Smarter on quite a few things over the years and I'm not sure if a thousand dollars is the end of the world to take and sponsor something just to keep that relationship status I don't know it's your guys opinion on that or no we can just vote because I don't think it's worth it okay. any other comments seeing none I guess we'll call the vote then all in favor Connie don't get it <laughs> so that's that motion was defeated Okay. I noticed that. Then moving on on that, I guess. Uh, BMO Far Family Farmer of the Year nomination. Yep. So they are going ahead with nominations again for 2022. Um, so the motion is basically just to approve that we can advertise for this. If we're good with that again, and then it's you know nominations can come in and we have the final say of who will get that if there's more than one and and then they're recognized at the calgary stampede and then from that then the cypress county would give them a, a farm family of the year award for the county as well recognized at medicine hat stampede okay uh anybody have a... yep need a motion on it i'll, just... I'll make a motion to uh Advertise for nominations for the BMO Bank of Montreal Farm Family Award. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Any other comments? If not, I'll be putting in one recommendation. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Okay. 1122 seed plant representative.
case, so each year uh, the ASB must appoint a member to the board to act as the county's representative for the on the twenty uh, the eleven twenty two co op seed cleaning plant board of directors. It's been Shane the last year. Anybody have nominations for anyone else? Or Shane, you're willing to do it again? Or? Shane, are you willing to do it again? Or? Okay. Okay. Anybody else? No. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion to nominate Shane or appoint Shane? I will. Okay. Josh moves to appoint Shane as the seed plant representative. All in favor? Carried. Might be a conflict. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, 2021 Beef Pen Show sponsorship. So I was contacted um, by the Metsnet Exhibition and Stampede and they're going to go ahead with their beef pen show again this year. Um, and they were looking for um, the same contribution that we've done in the past, which is $750 and, and then somebody just to present the winners at, at the pen show. Are you guys up for donations of $750 again? Okay. Shane moves that we donate the seven hundred and fifty dollars. Who's going to be the representative? That's going to be there. Josh, are you going to be there again? Yeah. Okay. Can we just use you? I'll be there too, but I'll be announcing. So. Josh. Okay. So Shane moves uh, to donate seven hundred and fifty dollars and send Josh to represent the county. All in favor? Carried. Okay. Your rabies survey surveillance partnership. So at the last meeting, um, they've they've been discussing the rat and rabies program. So normally we've always had um, a contractor that that does all the sampling, um, and and he's hired by uh, what is there five or six municipalities in the south. So. Cardston, Warner, Forty Mile, Cypress County, uh, Tabor and Newell, I think, is is who hires him. And now the government is deciding if they should continue with that program, like two sample skunks um, actively like that, and or to like they're still gonna suggest that um sampling anything that would be you know showing signs and symptoms and that sort of thing obviously we're we're rabies free and they want to kind of keep it that way um but there's a few municipalities that are are having a hard time maybe budgeting to hire the contractor now so kind of two different things here but um so they are hoping that the government would maybe contribute a little bit more money um, to the program. In return, though, they're thinking maybe they might just suspend the whole thing because the idea behind the whole thing was to be sampling a certain amount of, of skunks. Um, but we don't. Like, we, we get 11 in the two weeks that he's in Cypress County, and the plan was written for 60. So based on all those numbers, we're not, all of us collectively, like in the South, in that control zone kind of thing, we're not meeting those guidelines. So then they're just kind of debating if, if you know, with that, the information isn't correct, that sort of thing. So they're not getting a good guideline um, on some of that. So they're just kind of even debating just maybe to cancel, not cancel, suspend the program for three years, um, just to kind of see what happens with it. And, and then just if, if anybody has abnormal behavior, you know, they would still sample those species type things. So, so they're just kind of looking for all the ASB's feedback from these municipalities just to kind of get an idea of what we're all thinking so they can make a, a better decision, I guess, if they should, in fact, suspend that program or not. 
anybody got any thoughts on that? We've always thought it was very important. Um, you know, there, there haven't been rabies in Alberta for several years, and there's been a close, the closest one is, you know, 200 miles kind of into Saskatchewan. So it's not a huge threat along our borders. Um, but what happens if they suspend that program for three years? Would that ever come back again or not? You well, know? if you don't have rats, you don't have rabies, right? I guess so. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the way it goes. Yeah. Connie, what's your opinion? No, I don't think that would happen because there's still going to be, um, you know, random samples that will come in, just not, just not somebody going out to do a, a sweep, uh, you know, to collect samples all at one time, kind of. So. Like maybe an alternative, like doing it every second year or something. I don't know. I need to see the whole thing just be gone. Mm -hmm. I know others kind of felt that way too, um, but they just want to get an idea what everybody's kind of thinking. So. Go ahead, Shane. Well, <clears throat> I don't think we should, you know, continue on with it. I see, like recommendation number two, just trapping ones that are showing signs because we haven't found any since 1993. Alberta, no rabbit skunks have been detected since 1993, so we're just about 30 years of not finding one. So, when when do you say, okay, we don't have this problem anymore? I mean, it's it's quite old. I mean, sure, they found that one there, it says in 1996, but they're not sure of what type it was. You know, that was East Lloyd Minister, though, so, yeah. You know, we. If these, I think these other counties are looking at the same thing of sort of suspending it. Go ahead, Wayne. Well, was, we're we're going to still continue on with our rat program, when we? Like, well, the rat program and this are separate. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The rat program is in place. Certainly, there's a separate agreement for that. Um, so yeah, now they're just w wondering about the skunk sampling. Yeah. So my opinion would be same as Shane's. Is I don't know if we really need to stay involved in this skunk thing if it's starting you know if it's been under control for that many years and mm -hmm. maybe we can spend our money somewhere else yeah go ahead josh if there is a problem skunk found who looks after that do you guys go out and trap it or how does that work no because none of us have rabies <laughs> shots that's what i'm wondering guess, like it says you know, you know if there's a skunk displaying abnormal behavior well then yeah. How do you catch that one to test yeah. it? And that would have to be worked out, I suppose. You know, going forward, if that's the case, I other municipalities they must have like a pest control officer kind of thing, which must have all his recommended shots and that sort of thing. And we just happen to hire somebody to do ours. You know, so we're all sharing the cost. But yeah, like the shot alone is a thousand bucks or something, I think, to get that. Really. And we could also look at hiring a private contractor if that is the case. Uh, Jeffrey, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. From my days of actually having to do this, um, I think there is an alternative if the, if the, because the rabies has to, is only viable in a living um, creature or organism, right? So I think basically if a um, farmer got a trap and had, and trapped a skunk and thought, hey, this thing is, acting you know abnormally or peculiar and that's why he trapped it the, the farmer can always shoot the skunk as long as he doesn't shoot him in the head kill the skunk 
and then the, the the head could still be sampled or taken and sampled and sent in for sampling, right? Makes sense to me. Okay. And so, because the skunk is dead, the the fear or the factor of the rabies of the animal biting is now been eliminated, right? Okay, fair enough, Josh. Go ahead. So it's costing us about five thousand dollars on average to be in this program a year. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the census I'm hearing is uh, that we're looking at discontinuing the trapping, but we'd still like to be able to trap and submit skunks. And none of this is in stone yet, right? Like, this is just going to be our opinion that I'm going to suggest, you know, at the next meeting or whatever, and they're going to have their final decision, but they just are looking for everybody's kind of information input right now so they can decide what to do but if that's the way we're leaning that's that's good they can okay any other comments i'll entertain a motion from someone shane yeah, number two number two okay so shane moves uh into a move in favor of discontinuing random trapping but would still like to be able to trap and submit problem skunks particularly those displaying abnormal behavior all in favor? Carried. Yep. Okay. okay, the ESB priority list. Okay, so. So to supplement um, the guidance provided by the strategic business plan, staff would like the ASB assistance in determining the main priorities for the upcoming season um, and the weeds. So if there's prohibited noxious weeds, that means they must, all living plant, uh, parts of the plant must be destroyed. And for noxious weeds, they must be controlled. So on the priority list, Anything in red is new, we've just added. Um, I'm not sure why rat inspections and control haven't been on there before, but we thought we would put that in there. Um, and 2D, uh, any new prohibited noxious weeds, and not even necessarily prohibited noxious, but we think of the cut leaf viper grass that was found here a couple years ago. So we wanted to make sure, you know, things like that are going to be dealt with right away if, if they're new and problematic. Um, and then we added in all the noxious weeds uh, that, well, not all of them, but lots of the ones that we deal with here. Um, I'm not sure why they haven't been in here before either but we often are controlling those in ditches and, and that sort of thing. So, so we added those in. And then also wild boar under 6J. Um, we don't have any indication that there's any here yet, but the potential is there. You know, they're concerned about the Milk River and possibly the Forks kind of area up by Empress and that sort of thing. So they could come down the, down the river that way too. So... Just something to be on the lookout for and aware of but when we're talking about these noxious weed control this is just within the county right of ways or is this on private and lease lands um so sometimes we do some for private control as well um and that's why i added in number three is stuff that would be considered on county land kind of thing and then because we would normally be dealing with those before we would do anything privately um privately we would be billing it out and and that sort of thing but we have to look after our own stuff first what about county um right of ways that are leased out like say you have a county uh, uh, road allowance road allowance that's leased to a producer is the county still responsible for those areas how does that work to lease a a road allowance though yeah i think we would be because uh, you know when a landowner rents out his property to um, another producer ultimately when the weed notice is issued it goes to both the landowner on title as well as the person that's operating or doing the farming practice 
the road allowances. So, so I think, yeah, we do have a responsibility there. Okay, any other comments? I got one. I'll bring it up here since it's on here too. Under new road construction. That's a touchy one because uh, you need a special spray to make sure you don't kill your grass with your weeds. I think a better option there is dealing with public with uh, um, maintenance of cutting it more because you want you want them weeds. I hate to say this, but you need the weeds do come up and you cut them, but it gives your side slopes and your ditch bottom and your back slopes stabilization for erosion because mm -hmm. erosion will become a big thing coming off of them roads. And I know Alberta Transportation didn't they do not spray any of their new roads for weeds. They cut them more often, you know, get they get uh, Volker, you know, in this area, we can get public works. And they cut them more often and just, so the grass does get a chance to take over because by spraying, you need the special spray to make sure your grass isn't getting killed too. And that's not just killing your weeds, so. That's, I know that's what they do because of the erosion problem, because you get rid of all your vegetation, then you got an erosion problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've been using milestone uh, for a number of years, so that leaves the grass. Um, of course, it doesn't get the kochia, <laughs> so that would stay. But um, yeah, that's just what we've done in the past. So okay, any other comments, Josh? Go ahead. I have a question about number seven: noxious weed control assistance on private property. What does that mean? Because you have cat thistle listed, you have leafy spurge listed, burdock. Is the county willing, part of this program, is the county going to help private landowners control these weeds? Is that? For a fee. Yeah. For a fee. Okay. So in the past, like, we've often sprayed burdock and bindweed and different things for people. But we What wanna... is the fee? Is that in a schedule somewhere? Yeah. I think it's $40 an hour. 40 or 30? 30? 40? 40 dollars an hour? Yeah. Okay. Do you think we should have that listed in there as a fee or per schedule, whatever it is? Yeah, I, I can. It's easy to add that in, though. I'm just wondering, just as somebody looking through this saying, oh, they're going to help me with my. Yeah. So maybe yeah. as maybe add on to that uh, charged as in accordance with the master rate by law. Yeah, that's easy to do. We had to spray a whole quarter. I mean, the association paid for it, and then uh, the county had come out. We paid them after that in other years just with did spot spraying for the control and then the county helped talk to the base to try to control it on their side because it was coming from the base over and we paid them to up and do the spot spraying twenty thousand dollars a year spraying leafy spurge in the bt and so i'm seeing this and saying okay if the county's willing to help, what are they going to help with? That's all I'm asking. Because there are these noxious weed problems that are just continue to get yeah. worse and worse and worse, and there's landowners not doing anything about them. So that, that was my question. What, yeah. what does this mean that, you know, noxious weed assistance program? That makes sense. I get what you're saying. Um, so, yeah, if we add that in. And then, so it seemed like we used to do a lot more um, on private property, but the last, I don't know, even five years, we just find so much more of the prohibited noxious. So helping others is kind of important. So, right. I mean, it's good to have or if there's a serious problem or something, but. Yeah, because if you're charging $40 an hour, we'd hire you now because that's half of what we're paying. Yeah. 
So I just yeah. would like some clarity on that in there. Okay. Yeah. All I'm asking. Yeah. No, that's we can do that. Go ahead, Boyne. Well, I just I have a question that uh, is there any possible grants that we can look towards getting to uh, maybe help not only the county or the landowners with um, control of these noxious weeds, considering they are starting to be a problem. I'm not sure um, if there's grants out there, cap or anything. I don't know that they have um, anything for those purposes. Um, the prohibited noxious weeds has been something that the county provides. Um, look into as a grant I I'm not sure I would have to research that a bit go ahead Connie so the Ag Service Board grants that you guys get that provides funding for it, right? right yeah a portion of of that yeah. yeah it certainly doesn't cover the whole legislative program but it it, it does contribute yeah yeah so we get an Ag Service board grant every year um, and this grant cycle is good for five years so we get a uh, hundred and twenty three thousand kind of thing from the government to look after legislative so anything in the weed control act and and the pest control act and that those sorts of activities so so yeah there is a bit of money coming for that that's right I just had a bit of a side thought here well while we're talking about it uh, anyone it, would it be a thing could we get a hold of that hay west program and figure out which producers in the area took advantage of that hey west so that was where the they brought feed in from well as far away from newfoundland as far as i know so it may be worth actually getting who got in that program and do inspections out where they fed to see if they brought anything in from outside of the province yeah good idea hey west is that what you called it yeah. it's a, it was a program Okay, um, anything else on this priority list that you guys want to talk about? So all I have is, so it would be to move it as amended with an addition on number seven, I believe. Yeah. Uh, to add as in accordance with the master rate bylaw. Somebody want to move that? Josh? All in favor? Carried. Okay, measurable action items review. Okay, so this one is uh, the review for 2021. So this is our business plan. And I don't know how you guys want me to go through this. Cole's um, notes version would be good. <laughs> so we pretty much checked off all the boxes this year um, we're not going to IST that was scheduled for this week um, what else is in here we had our one resolution um, about the Canadian egg school uh, day in the school so that was good that'll be at the conference um, what else all our spring I think we did really good this year we had a good fall we had lots done we got lots done for provincial highways as well um, um, our newsletter we had two editions of that that came out this year so we had some good information in there um, of course there's always new uh, sites for noxious and prohibited noxious weeds so when we get those calls we inspect them and and certainly try and spray them and deal with them when we can um, the new road construction again so there was about 12 miles that we inspected and and then just spot spray where we feel it's necessary um, we do lots of control on 
other county land and yards, that sort of thing. So fire halls and water plants and transfer sites and, and all of those places. Uh, what else? So page, what are we on? 51. We do lots of um, inspections and that sort of thing. So, so there's testing for club root and then black leg and sclerotinia in, in canola. Um, fusarium testing, grasshoppers, we inspect each township in the county. So there was about 109 sites that we stopped at. Um, With uh, that fusarium testing, do we ever get any results from that? Uh, I think we do. They're not necessarily out right away or anything like that, but I don't think I've seen anything this year. I don't know that they've gotten to it yet, but but when we do, like they'll they might send a report or something to each individual county or just a master list or something, so that can be in another report that I'll have. Um, the rat inspections, so there was 194 in the spring and 220 this fall. Again, the 11 skunks were sent for sa uh, sampling for rabies. Our Dutch elm disease traps, um, our, our rental equipment and that sort of thing. The skunk traps have gone out. There was an inquiry about the magpie trap, but that guy never came to pick it up. Um, the strict nine, there was only enough cases for about 35 people to get this year and we're out. So that's the end of, of that program. Um, what else? Bacterial ring rot and potatoes. We didn't have any requests for that this year. So there's not many fields here though. Anyway, last year, I think we sampled one, um, Bertha army worm and diamond walk, diamond back moth traps. We always do those each year. That exit applicator, we should maybe, since now we don't have strict nine, we should put out an advertisement that that's actually available. Yeah, we should. Because I don't think anybody actually knows we have it. And when, yeah, and they often don't know what it is if they see it somewhere and that sort of thing. So uh, we have actually put pictures on the website with some of our equipment and stuff. So, yeah, we can, we can you know, do a post or something and, and that sort of thing too. So maybe a, maybe a post with all our rental equipment yeah. and uh, maybe highlight that as an alternative control measure for rodents. Yeah, sure. Good, good plan. Go ahead, Connie. Oh. Probably, yeah. Um, there might even actually be one on their website or something. We could, I feel like I've seen one, yeah. We could put a link to it or something. Yeah. Yeah, it might get really popular here. So yeah. let's maybe just talk about rental things for one minute here since we're kind of talking about it. Okay. Maybe, well, since I see our, all our rental equipment has a new parking spot right along the fence it may be advantageous to actually make a put a sign up there that says that the machinery is for rent yeah we could even maybe put like you know a the name of, of it there. and its price or something is that is that allowed kind of thing jeffrey would that be okay just you know, hanging on the fence the only thing about doing pricing is the pricing ever changes and we have to redo the sign That's so true. i think it might just be a list of the yeah. equipment would be sufficient um and Gosh, that's Connie had a good idea there. Maybe we can actually go and make a little video, do a walk around of what we have for equipment, and have that as a post that we can advertise on our social media. So, because okay. I actually don't think a lot of people are aware because what we actually have, mm -hmm. and even if we grab some stuff this coming year, just videos of it operating even, and make a little short thing. Jeffrey's good at making videos, I, I remember, so it may be uh, <laughs> something we can do it pretty much no cost to and have some decent advertising for it and it might actually take and get it out a little better yeah yeah that's we can do that for sure should we put a motion um, in that regard 
I don't know. Do we need? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, we can do them whenever we want. See that? Them drills and that we doubled the amount of acres we were hoping to do. Yeah, and you have good drills that usually happens. So, rollers need more acres. Yeah, and I, I think that might be a lot to do with having that other roller because it has a different purpose and it's a little bigger and everything else. So. Yeah, yeah, they did really good this year. Yeah. So maybe let's just do it while we're talking about it. Let's take and make a motion to do an advertising campaign on our rental equipment. Blaine's going to move that? Blaine. I can move that. Okay. All in favor of that? Carried. Sorry. Sidetracked. And also to put up a sign. Put that in there. Too. And the sign, yeah. Okay. I think there's usually always motions that come out of doing this because we think of things while we're doing it. So. Yeah, for sure. No, it's great. Okay, um, so yeah, like the seed drills and the land roller, they both were used a lot and and ran over a lot of acres there, so that was good news. That was exciting to see those numbers. Um, no reportable diseases that we were notified about or anything like that. No land was taken under supervision. Um, so there were no nominations for the BMO Farm Family of the Year Award in 2021, um, or the Cypress County Farm Family of the Year Award either. Um, and then just our regular kind of donations that we make each year. Some of those were awarded and some weren't. They either didn't have events going on or whatever was going on there. Um, what else is here? So the pipeline plow, there was a couple issues with that one. Um, there was a few people interested in it and then the, it wouldn't work for what they needed or, or it was broke down type thing. So that's ready to go now. Um, the livestock scale was used by two 4-H clubs this year. Um, the tag reader by one person this year. Um, backpacks, they never get used much for uh, rental there. The tree planters were busy. There was seven people using those and the mulcher as well. So that was good news. Um, and the grain bag roller um, was busy. There was 60 bags rolled up by Hilda and and sent and then I know there's another Hutterite colony um, that has several more that they want to roll to at some point here so so that's good and then our twine bag collection was new this year and we have 15 bags that are ready to be recycled at some point when when the truck comes around so so that was good news as well we didn't know how that one was gonna go um, Siwa and Milk River Watershed Council, there wasn't too much going on with that this year. There was a couple meetings that we attended and put in a couple articles in our newsletter for them. Um, the producers leading the way was a, the survey that has just recently come out. So Milk River Watershed is hopefully going to get some good information from that. If people will submit that back to them. And of course we gave Milk River Watershed uh, a donation there as well. They always do such great work. Um, and like silo the film and our soil health webinar and Dutch elm disease traps like we advertise and kind of just put all that kind of stuff on websites or in newsletters and that sort of thing we had the working well workshop and the soil health workshop so that was very good we haven't you know been into the whole workshop thing much so we had those and then hopefully we'll look at another one or two for 2022 um more grants in the pen show. I just assumed and put that one in there for you guys. <laughs> Our scholarships went out to two people again this year and there was uh, 19 virtual presentations for the farm safety training and about 300 students that 
participated in that. And EFPs and CAP program, um, so there, there was four people registered for their EFPs and none of them have been completed yet. So that's kind of my plan is to get on the phone and help some of these guys get them started or finished or however. And there were two grants under the Farm Technology Program um, awarded and 25 grants from the water program awarded this year through CAP. So I had no idea, I, you know, until I reached out last week. So that was really good news. So the water program, they've actually changed it with CAP now. It, it made it horrifyingly more complicated. Oh. Um, so I was actually, I'm just in the process of doing one of those, but you might actually get some phone calls of how to do that because they're, oh. complete, they're nowhere near as simple as they used to be. Oh, really? But the funding's much broader. Okay. Okay. So, because they'll, they'll take and pay a percentage of anything from cleaning dugouts to plowing and pipeline to everything now. Oh, Where okay. it used to be just irrigation efficiency before. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good news. Yeah. Yeah, I was really surprised by the 25 grants there. So, so that's good. Okay, well, I guess that that's that. Is there any questions about all that? Um, I actually had one comment that I received from somebody about the twine recycling. They said you know, they could take it to transfer sites and whatever. They actually asked if there'd be a collection bin at uh, like Schlinker's there where the chemical recycling is, if that would be a possibility. I'll have to look into that. Yeah. Um, there's not even really any space in there to put them now, is there? I don't so? really think it has to be so much inside, but I, I was actually thinking about it for as much as you would probably get if you, like, you know, those cages that totes come in. If you had just the cage, one of them sat there outside, just to throw yeah. the bags into, and then it needs you enough to go grab the bags out of the home to wherever they got to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we're just collecting them all here at the yard now. It's just yeah. an easy, you know, if we're out and about, we see them kind of thing. We just bring them back with us or whatever. But, yeah, we can look into something there maybe. Okay. Okay. Um... Scroll back to the top. Okay, does somebody want to, is there any questions on the measurable action items? Any other questions? No? Does somebody want to move that for information then? Josh or? Connie. Connie, either or, whoever you pick. All in favor? Cool. Carried. Okay, the 2022 measurable action items. So this is basically the same thing. Um, this will be what we kind of go on for next year. Um, and there should, any changes will be made in red. So the rat inspections, um, what page is it, 72? We just changed that to inspect 200 sites for Norway weigh rats twice a year. Um, it's been 300 for a long time and, and we just thought we would update that a little bit. It kind of varies every year because it depends whether there's bale stacks and houses, you know, being built or torn down or whatever. So, so the numbers on that do change a little bit here and there. Um, Page 73, the top there, to maintain Dutch elm disease traps. It's been six, and we've been doing seven traps for a number of years, so we just update that a bit. Um, Lisa, yep. are you going to have to change the sample stripe skunks for rabies to sample problem? I might. Well, I'll have to wait and see what the government's going to decide, oh, right, okay. and then, yeah, and then we can update that. I should make a note of that, though. Go ahead, Connie. I'm going to have to get on my way to my uh, test, so see you guys. Okay. Good. You too. Merry enjoy, Christmas. Have enjoy a your trip. <laughs> yep. Bye -bye. Yeah. See you, Connie. Okay, so page 75 then, um, under objectives, 
On two, I just added in, um, so the ASB in conjunction with staff will encourage proper soil resource management through the provision of educational opportunities and equipment to local producers. Just to reflect a bit more of what's going on there. Um, page 77, I added in um, the summer. The Ag Service Board Act, so I wanted that in there. And then on programs and projects that provide relevant education. or with educational programs related to culture. Also that you got and half
I didn't see anything too off the wall that we. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Either. Absolutely don't need to be involved. With. Okay. Yeah, I guess if there's just something that you're questioning or whatever, then it's we can.
You did? That was a very good guess. <laughs> 